Having a template that suits your needs could save you a lot of time during the process of music production, because a lot of the things that we do in our new projects are the same or similar to our previous ones. There are many different approaches to creating a template. For example, some people like to load their go-to instrument plugins for ease of access within the template, but some others believe that if you do that, you will get repetitive sounding music every time because you're using the same plugins and perhaps same presets. And so in this video, I'll be breaking down my own production template that I've been using for about three to four years and been updating it as time goes by but it should give you certain ideas and inspirations as to what you can implement in yours or if you really want to download mine i'll put a link for it in the description my approach for my production template is very simplistic i don't have a lot of instrument plugins loaded in fact i don't have any loaded because rarely do I make the same style of music with the same plugins over and over again. But that's something unique to my case. However, things that I always have in my productions are my drums and bass. So I made sure I have my main drum sounds, kick, snare, clap and hats already routed in the mixer and using the track mode inside the playlist. In addition, I have two bass channels prepared I named them 808, but because back then I was making beats and now it's changed a little bit to EDM side, still 808 is fine. And I will explain further why there are two bass channels and what's the purpose of each of these. Let me quickly show you what track mode means within the playlist. If I pick an empty track within the playlist and right click on it, go to track mode, audio track, and pick insert 7, which is empty on the mixer as well. Now this track 7 within the playlist and insert 7 on the mixer are synced up. So if I change the name of this inside the playlist to let's say piano and I color it something like this, both of them will change inside the mixer and the playlist. You could also use the track mode to route instruments. The same thing will happen, a track will be created with the instruments on it and it will be linked to the mixer. From here I want to break down my mixer and explain why it's laid out this way. One of the things that always took a lot of time from me for each new project was setting up my buses and effects sense. And because I know that in each project I need my buses and effects, why not implement it into my template so every time I open, they're already ready. And that's exactly what I've done. After a few years of experience, I know that I need my drum bus, bass bus, melodics bus, which is all the instruments that play any sort of melody or melodical content, vocal bus, self-explanatory, sound effects bus, which is for risers and downers and crashes and all kind of crap like that, and effects bus, which is dedicated to all these effects sense. The way I set it up so it doesn't get in the way of my normal one, two, three, four tracks is by going to the end of the template, grab a few tracks from the very end, right click, dock to left or right, depending on whether I want to make a bus or effects sense, and then go from there. So I don't use the first tracks or track number 30. I use the very end for my buses and effects sense and I use the beginning for everything else that's uh, individual tracks within the project. The way I color code my buses is because I got used to it being this way with the drums being red and bass being blue. These two always stayed consistent and I did change around the other ones once in a while. From there I have these four drum tracks that are already in my template and they're all going directly into the drum bus. If you don't know how to route buses I'm gonna quickly explain what's the difference between routing a bus and creating a send. So I'm gonna disconnect them from the drum bus and put it back on master the way it is by default. Now if I want to send my kick track to a reverb or a delay as a send, all I do is to left click under a channel I want to send it to. Simple as that. And then I can adjust the amount for that. However, if I want to route my kick track to a bus, I right click under that bus track and route to this track only. If you pay attention to the bottom left before I click on it, you will see that it's going to the master right now. And if I do this, it will disconnect it from the master and send it to the drum bus. Which means that this track is not going anywhere but the drum bus and from there the drum bus is going to the master. If you simply left click like this under your bus track, you will hear a duplicate of that signal twice as loud because you're gonna hear it through the drum bus 
and through the master bus, which is not what you want for a bus. I actually posted a dedicated video for the benefits of busing and bus processing, which I really do recommend that you go and watch after this, linked above and in the description. One thing to pay attention to is that, let's say I send my kick to a couple effect sends like this and I adjust the amount, but then you remember you haven't sent your track to the right bus. And now you want to do that, you right click and do route to this track only. And you can see that it got disconnected from those sends. There is no way around this currently. The only way is to do the bus first and then send it to stuff. But in case this happens, all you have to do is to click back on those sends and the amount will be remembered by FL Studio and it will be back to where it was. So let's quickly route all of our drums to the drum bus. Holding control, drag on the top with the left click to select them all. And the shortcut for route to this track only is control and left click. Now as you can see, none of them are going to the master and all going to the drum bus. The same thing is happening for the two bass tracks, but instead going to the bass bus. If you're finding the video helpful so far, please drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel. It goes a long way. And also do let me know in the comments what you would change about my template or what you would implement in yours. Let's get back to the video. The next thing that I do in every project, regardless of the genre, is to sidechain my kick to my bass or bass bus. And so in my template, I already send a sidechain signal holding shift and left click, selecting my kick track to the bass track, like so. And then on my bass track, I already have a FabFilter Pro Q3 loaded. I've already routed the sidechain by clicking on the gear icon, going to the second tab, processing and selecting my kick. And within Pro Q3, I choose the most prominent fundamental frequency of the kick, which is around 50 Hertz most of the time. I make sure to right click and make my band dynamic, then click on auto, turn on external sidechain within Pro Q3, to make sure it's blue like this. And now every time my kick plays, my bass will dock in this particular frequency with this particular amount. Your method of sidechain could be completely different to mine. I actually these days sidechain using Soothe on my bass bus for a second layer. And so replace this step with whatever method that you see fit and with the plugins that you own. I don't have any further processing on my drum channels or on my basses because as I said before, I don't make the same genre every project and it differs. But why do I have two bass tracks? Well, as you can see by the name, one of them is sub and the other is top. On the bass top track, I have another Pro Q3, which is cutting everything below 250 Hertz. On projects that I feel a wider bass would serve the song better, I send a duplicate of my bass track or just a send of my bass track into this 808 top. And I also turn on this band within the 808 sub which is the exact opposite of my 808 top. This one has everything below 250 and the other has everything above. This way I can add a stereo widening plugin to my 808 top and process that the way I see fit without messing with my sub. This is off topic, but I really do recommend that if you want to widen your bass, be really careful about everything that happens below 250 Hertz. The best way is to separate them. But if you do separate it on the direct track of your bass or sub, you might get some phasing issues. To be fair, this way you might also get some phasing issues, but as long as you're aware that something that might happen, you can have an eye for it, have an ear for it, and prevent it. Let's move further down right into the mixer, where I have my effect sense. As you can see, I have four reverbs and four delays. I initially started with only four reverb channels back in the days, and then gradually I started adding some reverbs and then some sidechain reverb and delay, docking delay, stuff like that. Most of them are not stock plugins, but Convolver, which is a cathedral, and this self sidechaining reverb and delay, which is a free patcher preset, I believe, uh, are stuck. The rest are from Valhalla in this particular version of my template. All eight of these tracks are being directly routed to the effects bus. On my effects bus, I have a Pro Q3 again, where I'm filtering the very lows and the very highs, and I'm adding a subtle boost around 1k. I start the project this way, but if I feel like my reverbs and delays are a little bit too dark or too bright, 
I do tweak this often. All the way to the left on my master boss, I have Vertigo VSM3, which has been a key feature on my master boss, and I get a lot of my color and tone of sound that I like from this plugin. It's a two module mastering saturator, it's super versatile, and you can do great things with this. But the point of having this on my master boss as I open a new project is because I want to hear the sound of this as I'm cooking. I like to cook through it in a way. The same thing with my Pro L2. The Pro L2 doesn't have any gain on it. However, it has a ceiling of minus 0.5, which avoids me clipping by accident. And if at any point during the production, I want to hear how a pre-master would sound like, I can just crank this up and hear how my project will sound like after being limited a few dBs. That's pretty much all that goes on on my mixer and playlist. I don't like to do my drum patterns within the channel rack like most of you do. I like to do it in playlist. However, I still incorporated the channel rack workflow for myself by just loading a kick, snare, clap, hi-hat, and two 808s for me to have them ready in case I want to use the channel rack. So when I want to make beats and I choose a different kick, I can just replace this kick with the one that's already in the channel rack. It's still going to channel one, same with the snare clap and the rest. I've done one more thing that most of you do when working with 808s, and that's setting up my envelope to the famous square, so I don't have to do this every time. I also have Porto and Mono checked inside miscellaneous functions tab. Last but not least, I made sure that Cut itself is checked for my 808 within the template. I'm gonna quickly bring in some drum samples and lay down a very simple drum pattern because I want to show you something. There's our kick. Let's grab this clap, snare, hi-hat. I'm gonna load the hi-hat in here and yeah that should do it for what I want to show you. So first of all I just dragged in the samples directly from the browser into the playlist onto the channel for the corresponding sound. I dragged my kick to the kick and automatically that kick is going to number one. Same with the snare and the clap. Now let's quickly lay down a trap pattern. So these are all the tracks we already had prepared in the template. What if I bring, let's say, a percussion sound, a Brazil perk like this, and we drag it in here. We don't have a track prepared for it. The way I work at the moment, I don't quickly go on and send this to a channel to color it like this fast and send it to a drum bus. I'm a little bit messy these days and I like to keep expanding on the project and bring everything and then when I feel happy with everything that I have in the project, I feel ready to take my time, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes max, just organizing everything, coloring and naming and sending everything to the right track. Uh, right bus, right effects, and everything like that, preparing for the mix. I do mix as I go, but I mainly focus on my drums and bass, which I already have during the as I go mixing, if you want to call it that. And later when I do the final mix down, I start focusing on everything else and putting them in the right order. But it's entirely up to you if you want to tidy as you go and start creating tracks right now for it. Call it perk, send it up beside the rest of the drums and make sure you name it correct here and everything that goes on. I just wanted to show you that you can go different ways according to the way you work. This was everything that I have on my production template. When you've designed yours or maybe you downloaded mine and you made some tweaks, and you want to save it as your own, click on file, save as template, name it accordingly, and from there you can go to options, general settings, scroll down, under miscellaneous section, pick the name of the template you just saved, and change the startup project to default template, which means that every time you open a little studio by default, your template will be loaded. I hope you found the video helpful and took something away from it. I do make a lot of tutorials about FL Studio and music production, and I also regularly live stream to YouTube, reviewing your music for free, giving you feedback, so please consider subscribing to not miss out on any of the content or live streams. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.